Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering alcohol disorder. Before we even get started, guys, please help support this channel by liking this video. You know you're gonna like it. Liking this video, subscribing to this channel, pressing that red notification button. Don't forget I have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. This is the book that I'm teaching out of for alcohol disorder. I know you guys always wanna know in the comments, which book am I using this time? This time I'm using Medical Surgical Nursing by Lewis 10th Edition. All right, let's get started, guys. Okay, so look at what it says. Alcohol toxicity. So this occurs when a person has a high level of alcohol in their blood, generally after ingesting a large amount of alcohol. This leads to behavior changes and alcohol-induced CNS depression. Let's stop right there. Because when you watch the movies or you think about someone who's drunk or drinking alcohol, you think about them partying, just being very hyper. You would think alcohol was a stimulant, but it's not. Alcohol is a depressant. It depresses the system. Take a look at this, guys. CNS depression resulting in respiratory and circulatory failure. Everything slows down. Unconsciousness, coma, and possibly death can occur. Other common factors include hypokalemia, decreased potassium, hypomagnesemia, decreased uh, magnesium, and hypoglycemia, decreased blood sugar. Now, let me ask you this. What will kill a patient faster, hyperglycemia or hypoglycemia? Hypoglycemia, that will kill you much, much faster than hyperglycemia. And the reason for that, when the patient's experiencing hyperglycemia, there are so many compensatory mechanisms that take place. It really buys you time to get help. But if you're having a hypoglycemic reaction, boom, you're on the floor, you bottom out. So this is very important to understand. The patient's gonna be hypokalemic, they're going to have hypomagnesemia and hypoglycemia. You're going to do a health history. You're going to get it as accurately as possible. Remember, they're going to be drunk, but you're going to try to get as accurately as possible. If they come in and they have a family member or friend with them, try to get as much information as you can. You're going to assess them for injuries, diseases, and hypoglycemia. That is very important because hypoglycemia will kill someone very quickly. Look at this. There's no antidote for alcohol or alcohol into intoxication. They actually have to just um, um, wait it out, let it pass through their system. There is no antidote. Priorities, nursing priorities. You need to maintain airway breathing circulation because let me tell you something. If there's not a patent airway for that patient to breathe, nothing else matters. That patient's dead, right? So you have to maintain the ABCs. You're going to do frequent um, vital signs. You're going to be checking their level of consciousness because remember that patient can go into a coma on you. They can become unconscious. And if they become unconscious, they can aspirate. We can have a whole other set of issues that's going on. Patients with hypoglycemia may receive glucose containing IV solutions. Hypoglycemia is going to be one of your top priorities for a patient that's going through um, alcohol intoxication, alcohol toxicity, okay? IV thiamine may be given before or with IV glucose solutions to prevent what's known as uh, vertice Korsakoff syndrome, and that can cause seizures and even brain damage. Let me tell you something, those heart muscles and brain muscles, they don't regenerate. So once it dies, it dies, okay? Let's go over alcohol withdrawal syndrome. This is something that's very dangerous that you have to uh, watch out for. And um, NCLEX does ask about this. They test on this, so you, I, you have to know this. You have to understand this. So alcohol withdrawal delirium. When you see that word delirium, that lets you know that that patient is not in touch with reality, okay? This is a serious complication that can occur two to three days after the last drink, and it can last for two to three days. NCLEX expects you to know 
that the most dangerous time for this is two to three days after their last drink. So one of the most important things that you need to ask this patient with is when was your last alcoholic drink? Okay. Two to three days after the last drink, the greater the patient's dependence on alcohol, the greater the risk of alcohol withdrawal delirium. Death may result from hyperthermia, sepsis, aspiration pneumonia, or peripheral vascular um, collapse. So this is something very serious. Again, you need to know those two to three days. And what you're going to ask that patient is when was your last drink? Um, management begins with identifying people who are at risk. So there's a symptom assessment tool. Um, I'll go over that with you right, right now. Here it is. This is that symptom assessment tool. Is this it? What was it? Give me a second, guys. Table 10.8. Where's table 10.8? Oh, I was right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Table 10.8, the Clinical Institute Withdrawal Assessment of Alcohol Scale Revised. So look, this is what we're looking for. Agitation, anxiety, auditory disturbances, hearing things that are not really there, headache, clouding sensorium, paroxysmal sweats, tactile disturbances, tremor, and visual disturbances. I want you to take a look at this, effects of chronic alcohol use. And I love this because it breaks it down by system. Look at the neurological effects. Alcohol dementia. Wernicke Korsakoff syndrome, remember that's deadly. For hematologic, leukopenia, guess what? That patient's gonna be at risk for what? Infection. Thrombocytopenia, they're gonna be at risk for what? Bleeding. And of course, blood clotting abnormalities with those um, blood disorders. Cardiac patient can have hypertension. Wait a second, Professor D, you said hypertension, but you said that alcohol is a depressant. How are they gonna have hypertension that blood pressure's up? Well, we're talking about um, effects of chronic alcohol use, chronically what it's gonna do to the patient. Um, hypertension, AFib, stroke, coronary artery disease. Remember guys, the heart muscle itself has to be fed oxygen, vitamins, nutrients that's carried in the blood. And so if the supply to the heart muscle itself is obstructed, that will cause the patient to have heart issues. It can cause what? Sudden cardiac death. What can happen to the liver? Now we're talking about hepatic, alcoholic hepatitis, cirrhosis, liver cancer, GI. Yeah, alcohol causes um, ulcers. And guess what? Those ulcers bleed. So that patient is at risk for bleeding to death. Let me tell you something. Anything that affects the liver can cause the patient to bleed. Because remember, your clotting factors are made in the liver. So if the liver is affected, there's a high chance that patient's gonna have bleeding disorders. They're gonna have clotting disorders. It makes sense. Esophageal varices, bleeding, nutrition. They're gonna have vitamin deficiencies, especially thiamine. And you expect to be um, replacing this in the patient. That's very important to know. NCLEX expects you to know that as well. Manifestations of alcohol withdrawal. Let's see if I can. What's this patient gonna look like when they're actually going through withdrawal? Remember there's no antidote, right? So they're gonna have to wait it out and hopefully they survive. You're gonna try to help them survive. Look at the signs and symptoms of what that patient's gonna look like when they're withdrawing. By the way, guys, alcohol withdrawal is possibly, remember it's possibly deadly. So you have to watch your patient very closely agitation, anxiety, heart rate's gonna be increased, blood pressure's gonna be increased, sweating, nausea, tremors, insom insomnia, and hyperactivity. What are you gonna do for your patient? What are you expecting to give your patient? NCLEX expects you to know this, benzodiazepines to prevent seizures and delirium. When it comes to alcohol withdrawal, benzos are on top of the list, okay? Benzos such as, you know, lorazepam. Thiamine, remember, we have to replace that thiamine. Thiamine to prevent vernacy Korsakoff syndrome. We want to prevent that patient into having seizures or going into a coma and all those other um, CNS changes, right? 
Magnesium sulfate we're going to give to the patient because remember that alcohol will cause the potassium to go down. It will cause the magnesium to go down. It will cause the blood sugar to go down. So we have to replace that magnesium. IV glucose, absolutely. Hypoglycemia can kill you very quickly. I keep saying that. Beta blockers, why beta blockers? Because of the hypertension and increased heart rate. That one beta blocker kills two birds with one stone. It's going to bring down the blood pressure and the heart rate, both of which we're going to have trouble with. And you're going to give that patient uh, respiratory support because remember, um, that's also a big problem. If that patient's not breathing, nothing else matters, right? Now, alcohol withdrawal delirium. Remember, when the patient is... Um, experiencing delirium, they are completely out of touch with reality. They may experiencing, they may experience the, um, disorientation, visual, tactile, or auditory hallucinations, seeing, feeling, hearing things that just are not there, or they can even go into seizures. So you're going to continue giving the benzos as ordered. You may give carbamazepine or um, Depakote for the seizures, to treat seizures. And Librium, if psychosis persists, look at this, guys. I wish I never have a highlighter whenever I'm teaching you guys. This is so funny. I want you to pay attention to what this says here. After benzo administration. Remember, Benzo, that is going to be our priority med that we're going to be giving for um, those patients that are experiencing seizures or delirium, okay? But if we've given that benzo and it's not working, you expect for this to be ordered delirium. Guys, that is your um, alcohol toxicity in a nutshell. It's not as hard as it seems. Um, I encourage you to please watch this video a second time. Take your time, pause, write down these signs and symptoms because NCLEX is gonna expect you to know the signs and symptoms of toxicity, of withdrawal, and also delirium, okay? They expect you to know um, those signs and symptoms and they expect you to know the nursing interventions that you're going to be doing for these type of patients. Please let me know what you thought about um, this video in the comments. Let me know what you'd like to see me cover next. Don't forget, I have videos um, that I do questions. I teach you how to answer the questions and how to eliminate the wrong answer choices. Those come out every Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, don't forget, I have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. And you guys can catch me every single day covering different types of questions on my social media platforms such as uh, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Please, guys, support this channel by engaging, commenting, sharing this content with someone you think that would benefit from it. Thank you so much for watching this video, and you guys will catch me on the next video.